At this time, I'm gonna hand things over to our presenter today, Dr. Andrea Hunt. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you again, Walden, for this great opportunity to present my uh, post study um, dealing with human resource managers lived experience integrating knowledge management and human capital management. Uh, my chair who assisted me with my program is Dr. Kerry Heitner. The problem with this study and developing it is I researched on organizational leaders in the United States, um, that they were encountering a significant, significant human capital challenges with the majority of the demographic shift in the United States workforce. Uh, it was critical to understanding and addressing the challenges in the workforce uh, success in the hiring practices, uh, retention and the management of knowledge workers, which necessitated the integration of these practices into uh, existing human intellectual capital and management strategies. Uh, my research addressed the need for understanding human resource managers' lived experiences, integrating the practices and strategies. The purpose of my study was using a qualitative hermeneutic phenomenological study to explore the lived experiences of 16 human resource managers and professionals specific to their integration of knowledge management practices with human intellectual capital management strategies in professional uh, service firms located in the Eastern region of the United States. The significance of my study findings dealt with contributing to filling the gap in research literature specific to human research managers' perceptions about their experiences with integrating knowledge management practices and human in intellectual management strategies in the workplace. Uh, researchers have shown that there are positive relationships between knowledge management practices and organizational innovation, uh, performance, and uh, competitive advantage, as well as how integration of knowledge management practices and human intellectual capital management strategies can improve organizational performance. My theory for the study I dealt with, the significance to how further development of the conceptual frameworks and theories related to knowledge management practices and human intellectual capital management strategies. The perceptions of human resource managers interview the 16 individuals for my study um, it dealt with informing me on the various conceptual frameworks addressing the three areas of knowledge management pro processes, such as knowledge creation, knowledge sharing, and knowledge utilization. Human resource managers account for the lived experiences of managing knowledge uh, among the workforce and can generate a new awareness that may build upon seminal knowledge worker productivity theory. Next slide, slide, please. The relevance to scholarship dealing with my study, I displayed it graphically, looking at the importance from low to high and the urgency from high to low. The first being that it enhanced the approach for existing research to be able to manage theories. Then the second dealt with the focus of uh, bridging the gap between the field of academia and the public. And then the third is to enhance learning, reflecting on workforce demands from management to uh, achieve organizational performance as the purpose of my study. And then last, using experimental knowledge to discover new types of knowledge that are developing from seminal research and from my study. Next slide, please. My research question, my primary research question dealt with what are the lived experiences of human resource managers related to integrating knowledge management processes with human intellectual capital management strategies in professional service firms in the Eastern region of the United States. I also had three sub research questions. My first was uh, what were human resource managers experiences on the integration of knowledge creation processes with human intellectual capital management strategies. The second sub-research question was, 
uh, what were the human resource managers experiences of the integration of knowledge sharing processes with human intellectual capital management strategies? And my third sub-research question was, what were the human resource managers experiences of integration of knowledge utilization processes with human capital, intellectual capital management strategies? When I looked at my participants in trying to recruit individuals, I selected a four uh, selection criteria. I looked for individuals who worked within the 21 states in the Eastern region of the United States. My second area was individuals who held a professional position or uh, membership with the Society for Human Resource Management, uh, acronym does SHRM. The third was individuals had to have a minimum of five years experience in a senior leadership as a C-suite executive director or a department head. And the last is that the individuals had to have knowledge of their company's knowledge management practice and human intellectual capital management strategies. Um, after my fourth interview, um, working with this four selection criteria and receiving information for, from four participants, four of the participants informed me that I should expand my search also to individuals who would be a part of the membership of the Academy of Management. So I submitted an IRB change, changing my first and my second sampling process. I changed it and received approval, revising the second uh, selection criteria um, to individuals that uh, must hold either a current professional membership with the Society for Human Resource Management or that they had an undergraduate degree uh, in human resource management or a related field. And then adding to the second sampling process, adding a third source for recruiting uh, study participants that were recruited through um, the Academy for Management uh, using their online community, such as uh, Connect AOM Digital Community. And the Academy of Management was not identified as a research partner. Using this additional um, sampling process, I was able to complete and obtain a total of 16 participants. And so I had eight participants who came from SHRM in the Academy of Management, and then I was able to use a sampling process to um, complete and obtain eight additional participants, giving me a total of 16 participants. Um, noted that uh, one of my participants actually worked in multiple states. When I looked at the characteristic of my sample and my data saturation in order to achieve data saturation, my goal at the time was having 16 participants and to have a homogeneous sample size uh, to achieve. Um, and the participants shared a common selection criteria. And then last, using a filmological research focused on collecting experimental rich accounts to produce scholarly and reflective uh, phenomenological texts. So the individuals, 16 individuals, they two of them had a bachelor's degree and they had anywhere from five to 15 years experience. Eight had a master's degree, had five to 40 years experience. Six of them had a doctorate and they had uh, 10 to 40 years ex experience. Uh, the gender characteristics, as I had nine individuals that were uh, female, seven were male. The nine uh, female made up 56.25% of my sample, and the male made up 43.75% of my sample. Uh, the race components, I had nine individuals who identified as Black and six individuals who identified as white or uh, Caucasian, one individual identified as being Hispanic. The main mean range of the age of the individuals was 52.6 and the median years were 50.5. When I looked at the procedure of my data collection and instrumentation and analysis, the ultimate goal that I used to uh, complete my uh, dissertation 
um, I use the hermetic circle for reasoning to arrive at a deeper understanding of the phenomenon focus of my research, and that was the integration of knowledge management practices with human intellectual capital management strategies. So I used a hermeneutic circle. Um, the primary data was collected using semi-structured uh, individual interviews that I conducted via a conference call. One of my interviews I conducted via a Zoom at the request of the, of the participant. And then I analyzed it consisting of conducting the hermetic phenomenological research. Using the hermetic circle, I used a two cycle coding process uh, to establish a thematic approach emphasized on three areas of meaning. And then I used the product called Atlas TI-9 to organize um, and code my data. So I collected the um, interview transcripts as a whole. Then I um, looked at the individual's lived experience. This helped me to develop textual descriptions of the participants' quotes. And from there, I was able to develop seven themes. I then used a circle again to re review the participants' lived experience to determine how to integrate the concepts of uh, knowledge management and human intellectual capital. Looking at the data analysis process, this was the end of looking all, at all three of the processes of knowledge creation, knowledge sharing, and knowledge utilization, where the outcome yields uh, seven themes. I looked at the data analysis to analyze the data based on the primary research question, which was what was the lived experience of human resource managers related to integrating knowledge management processes with human intellectual capital management strategies in uh, professional service firms in the Eastern region of the United States. I was able to review each sub-research question compared to the participants' lived experience, developing seven themes. So the participants' lived experience that I examined were at the sub-research questions, looking at knowledge creation integration with the participants' experience, looking at knowledge sharing integration participant integration participant experience, and then looking at knowledge utilization, integration of the participants experience. The themes that were developed was one, the nature of knowledge, two, the new knowledge, three, external influence of knowledge process integration, four, internal influences of knowledge process integration, five, knowledge process integration improvements, six, process, knowledge process integration hindrances, and then seven, knowledge process integration outcomes. In looking at my data analysis of the sub-research question, I was able to look at each sub-research question using Atlas TI and reading over the uh, participants' transcripts. I was able to develop code units, categories, to then develop each theme from what the participants shared as their lived experience. From there, I was able to develop and look at the primary research question to determine the integration of each of the theme. The theme integration of the sub-research question dealing with knowledge creation and knowledge sharing, they dealt with external influences of the knowledge process integration. It reflected on um, through the hermetic circle on the interpretation of each of the seven themes shared across knowledge creation and knowledge sharing integration. The theme did not emerge on from the knowledge utilization data. Looking again at the participants' lived experience, um, I obtained a quote from two of my participants looking at knowledge sharing and integration uh, with human intellectual capital and the external influences of knowledge pr uh, process integration. Two of my participants described knowledge creation as a limitation imposed on uh, his organization, a state institution by state governmental regulations and that the employees were governed by regimented um, civil service rules and the state bargaining units. And it's because the employees use in governmental regulations to override his decisions, he had to learn from experience how to work around ramifications of decisions to achieve his institutional objectives. 
looking at the integration as the primary research question of knowledge sharing and knowledge utilization, the knowledge process integration outcomes reflected through the hermetic circle of interpretation of each of the seven themes that were shared across knowledge sharing and knowledge utilization integration. This theme did not emerge from the knowledge creation integration. It looked at, uh, I looked at quotes again from the textual descriptions and from my participant number four that looked at knowledge sharing utilization and the knowledge process integration outcomes. Participant four said the, the positive outcomes of knowledge utilization within his organization included improved employee performance. Next slide, please. When I looked at the findings of my study and reviewing my conceptual framework, my conceptual framework that I um, drew initially uh, and then in completed of my uh, dissertation, I looked at it like a tree in terms of the knowledge management processes. The tree at the roots hold the processes of, of knowledge management creation processes, knowledge sharing processes, and knowledge utilization processes. The trunk of the tree being managerial management, knowledge management, the expertise of managers and their tacit knowledge, and the tree growth comes to human intellectual capital management strategies, uh, hiring retention and management of the knowledge workers. So using my conceptual framework, I looked at the two theories using seminal research. One was Drucker's 1999 seminal knowledge uh, worker productivity theory. And the second was uh, Wright and McMahon's 1992 seminal theory on strategic human resource management, further updated in 2011, which dealt with the emphasis of the importance of uh, human capital itself and how to attract, motivate, and develop and retain talent. Uh, I determined in the conclusion of my study, looking at the conceptual framework, that there is an actual link between these two theories that is supported in the, the literature, that with the researchers concluding that the organization's management of its intellectual capital assets is actually connected to its knowledge management capacity. The findings of my study indicated that the integration of knowledge management processes into human intellectual capital strategy actually improves uh, employee performance, hence extending Drucker's research on worker productivity. And the, using the findings and how it related to the literature, I was able to look at my literature review, which was located in chapter two, and um, compare the findings of my study with the themes that were developed to determine whether or not the literature review confirmed, disconfirmed, or extended the theory. Several of them confirmed this theory, and um, there were a few that also extended the theory. The findings that I found in dealing with the theme of new knowledge um, in terms of COVID-19 pandemic and societal-based knowledge were not located in existing literature specific to the integration of knowledge management processes with human intellectual capital management strategies, simply because we had not, I can see that we had not ever experienced a pandemic for over a hundred years. And that was not within the confines of my research in my literature review. So continuing with the literature review, and if you would go to the next slide, please. Dealing with the interpretation of my study, I dealt with knowledge, uh, generational knowledge, looking at my participants and what they shared with me. I determined that 63.7% determined on that knowledge creation is very important in terms of general, like, generational knowledge. And the second, looking at generational cohorts, that is baby boomers, the silent generation, generation X, generation Y, the millennials, and perhaps even uh, members of potentially generation Z. Looking at the COVID-19 pandemic, um, when I look at the COVID-19 COVID pandemic, it was because my interviews were conducted at the beginning phase of the pandemic, when in many individuals were uh, quarantined at the time because of the global shutdown. 
So what they also shared with me, which is number four, is the global health emergencies, the use of technology, the social isolation, and then hiring retention and knowledge management to yield job performance. The limitations of my study dealt with qualitative phenomenological research design, the COVID-19 pandemic, and then participant research bias. How, how I dealt with this is the limitations of my study. I dealt with the trustworthiness, the credibility of the participants' interview transcripts, the her using the hermeneutic circle process, and then using a constant comparative st strategy. I used transferability of, of my information using rich, thick descriptions of the methodology and results and illustrative quotes from participants. Um, the dependability of it, I dealt with audit trails and the data collection phase um, and using the Atlas TI-9 codebook. And then last, the confirmability of the limitation, I dealt with uh, as a research, the hermetic phenomenological double hermetic and the interpretation of the participants' experiences. Um, recommendations from the study for future research uh, deals with new areas of research that were identified by the participants' lived experience. And the new research um, I determined was uh, how human resource managers in integrate knowledge management processes with human intellectual management strategies. The first is expanding on theoretical and empirical literature, such as generational and proprietary nature of knowledge. The second was public health emergencies and social based, society based knowledge, such as dealing with the COVID-19 global pandemic effort on organizational operations and human resource managers uh, roles. The last is the sample size um, and, and and actually last is diversity. And this area of diversity from my participants lived experience dealt with my participant number seven, uh, who stated that um, she concluded that attributed to the influence of her company's corporate perspectives on using knowledge and expertise of women leaders to opening up the trucking industry to a whole new sector of people. The recommendations for future research and limitations on recommendations. My current study of the 16 participants, I dealt with the four selection criteria and then changing the participant logic procedures and expanding the recruitment sources. My recommendations would be to increase the target population, the membership of professional organizations, uh, obtaining human resource managers who have a bachelor's of science, uh, master's or perhaps doctorate, and that maintain professional membership in leadership organizations and professional pro uh, management pressure, professional groups. Um, then also that the participant criteria also looks at the title of individuals who have a title of chief human resource managers, then looking and expanding of two other geographical regions within the United States. I would also recommend that uh, using a different research approach, such as the Delphi method study for the study, um, also uh, using diversity and culture as an aspect of looking at organizational hiring practices, social change and social justice. And then last looking at leadership styles and how they may have an influence on integrating these concepts. The social change implications of my study. Um, I looked at first a quote by David White, who talks about the 21st century employees must honor the souls of individuals who work for them. And the soul is the essence of a person's being or spirit and involves how that person experiences belong in their world, community, and work. When I looked at the social change implications, it's dealing with how human, resource, uh, human, human resources improves uh, human resource intellectual capital management policies and practices that can benefit from both individual employees' perspective, actual, and the organizations where they work. When we're looking at the themes that dealt with new knowledge, 
it dealt with the impact of positive social change and how would it improve these individual uh, employees, their perspective where they work, and how the organization is, is able to integrate with these concepts to create positive social change, specifically looking at C-suite executives and human resource managers being able to create shared value with knowledge workers. New knowledge integrated in knowledge practices with human capital strategies to be able to improve social engagement, to determine how to scan for issues and opportunities that could have a positive impact in community engagement. Looking at the social change implications, I also asked my uh, participants a final interview question. I asked them if they could think of anything else they would like to add about their experiences that they didn't share already. Um, and the impact of positive social change came out on how to improve human resource uh, intellectual capital management policies and practices that could benefit both the individual employees perspective actual and the organization where, where they work. They emphasized COVID-19 and the global pandemic. And so reviewing the themes of knowledge creation, knowledge sharing and knowledge utilization, new knowledge uh, was developed because COVID-19 was impacted these individuals um, in their sharing and obtaining new knowledge. And knowledge sharing um, developed because of knowledge processes and integration of hindrances due to the lack of knowledge of COVID-19 hindrances and COVID-19 cha uh, challenges. The theme of dealing with the sub-research question on knowledge utilization did not apply given that the processes were not fully integrated. So looking at the social change implications, uh, human resource managers to C-suite executives, it's dealing with shareholders being more involved in social change aspects in the community, being able to adopt measurable knowledge management practices for the purpose of optimizing and leveraging individual and um, organizational performance outcomes and the assets they can contribute to corporate responsibility by addressing social issues. And the last is to update existing uh, business continuity plans and crisis communication plans that would include a global pandemic scenario. Um, in conclusion, I looked again to David White and what he said about the knowledge worker. He said that the knowledge worker needs belonging and meaning and prefers autonomy and rejects the notion of worker authoritarianism and dominates over human existence. In my study using the hermetic phenomenological research design, um, it allowed me using the des this design uh, to address the problem and the lack of understanding human resource management perception about the integration of uh, knowledge management practices with human intellectual, intellectual uh, capital strategies. Um, obtaining the lived experience from the 16 participants and using this approach uh, expanded the knowledge on the integration of knowledge management processes with human uh, capital intellectual capital, capital strategies. Think of this, my study in conclusion, like a puzzle. Human resource managers and uh, management professionals must integrate these concepts by finding the matching pieces addressing the lack of understanding the perception that is evolving. It is one depending on the organization. It is also depending on the industry, the market, the knowledge worker, and then the changing workforce attributed to the increase of societal educational values. And then last organizational strategy. In essence, managerial decisions addressing social change impacts all stakeholders and requires involvement or commitment to change identifying the needs for all. Can you please skip to the final remarks, please? My references and my final remarks is one, I'd like to thank uh, Walden University for giving me this opportunity to present today. I would especially like to thank my committee members, uh, Dr. Kerry Heitner, Dr. Barbara Thompson, Dr. Heikatis, um, and then my former chair, Dr. Barbara Turner. But I also would like to thank and give a special thank you to Dr. 
Sandra Kohlberg and Dr. John Neitenberg. I met them both in 2016 at Walden University's uh, residency in Barcelona, Spain. Um, and they were the ones who helped me to fine tune my research and helped me to complete my research and what I was searching for um, through um, research that's out there done uh, by former researchers. And lastly, uh, this is touches my heart that I like to thank Dr. Ingram and Dr. Gold, uh, Gilbert from Walden University. Uh, from my first residency that I attended in Paris, France, to my second residency in Barcelona, Spain, and even in, uh, in the United States, in Dallas, Texas, and in Maryland, they were always there. And they made me feel like I belong, that I was not an imposter taking this path of pursuing a PhD in management. So I just like to thank them personally. And this concludes my study. Thank you so much, Walden. Thank you very much, Dr. Hunt, for sharing your uh, presentation and your expertise and knowledge with us. Um, at this time, uh, we have some guests on uh, this Zoom session. Uh, we invite you to either come off mute or type any questions that you may have in the chat at this time for uh, Dr. Hunt and her presentation. And if there is none, uh, again, we thank you all for your participation. Um, we hope you were able to gain some uh, knowledgeable insight from this presentation, and we hope you enjoyed the uh, rest of the symposium.